Tuesday, June 12, 2012, meeting of the City of Santa Barbara Finance Committee will now come to order. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on topics not on today's agenda yet under the jurisdiction of this committee? Not after last night's Thank you. Seeing none, I will now go to the first agenda item. Mr. Samario. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. So this will be, I think, the, maybe the final time we, we meet to discuss the reserve policies. Um, we have had two meetings over the last few months to kind of bring to you some ideas and based on the feedback we received from the committee and council on reserves, focusing per right now on the general fund. And so in your agenda report, we included the latest draft of the policies um, for reserves that we said, you know, we wanted to give you a chance to kind of take a look at before we met, when we met last time, uh, give you a few weeks to, to consider them and come back with any final direction. So really we're here just to hear your thoughts on what you think of the policies as they are. We'll fine tune them and to make them look a little more official, but it's all the, the concepts are there. And um, so we're looking for final direction before we go to council for have them consider um, these proposed policies. So with that, I'll just turn it over back to the committee. Very good. Okay, questions or comments from the committee? Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I, uh, as a, as in broad comment, uh, I feel like this is a another good step and uh, one I think that um, is appropriate for, for council to, to discuss the questions. Um, well, some of them are kind of naive. Um, a balancing strategy. I expect there's a fairly formal definition of that. I mean, I can sort of come up with it in my own head, but what would, what the, do the technicians, uh, how would a technician describe that term? I think it's, it's really a strategy that's designed to address whatever impacts have occurred. And, you know, every, every situation is going to be unique for sure. So, um, but it's a strategy that's, that's going to be designed to mitigate the impacts and offset the impacts of whatever those impacts are, particularly we're talking, you know, or typically we're talking revenue losses. And the strategy would indicate how we're going to do it over what time period we're going to do it and, and what types of funds are we going to be able to, we're going to propose to use to address those impacts. If it's a small hit, you know, we can do it probably within a year. But if it's a major hit like we had recently, it's a strategy that involves a, a number of measures, which could include the use of reserves, um, some cost-cutting measures, um, other one-time funds we might have available. It's essentially what we did to try to bring bring something back to stasis. Would, would yeah, be but over a period of time that is reasonable. Um, but it's going to be depending upon the the, the the depth of the impact and the significance of the impact. Okay, and then. One thing that um, I have always been in wonder of is the one-time funds. Each year, there's a uh, it's a different box. It's a different set of situations. How is there is there each year is there a way that we know what those one time one time funds are? Yeah. Um Mr. Chairman and Council Committee Member White, you're right. You know, it seems like every year we come up with a, a new sort of set of um, one-time funds, but I think we've been really relying in the last few years on one big one, and that's the workers' comp rebate. You know, funds we had, where we generated some surpluses because of great, um, you know, a good loss history, Change loss, um, um, yeah, hit loss history. So we were able to generate a significant amount of reserves that we've been able to use over the last several years, and we still have, in fact, some monies available. Um, that we didn't even use next year that we could use potentially in, in fiscal year 14. Um, but no, it's hard to identify those things. They kind of just come up. We find them. We have, you know, we talked about the fact that we've, with the new accounting manager looking at a new set of eyes, we were able to find some one-time monies here and there. We just can't rely on them or predict them um, other than what we know for sure right now, like the workers' comp reserves. Okay. Yeah, that's, as they say, it's a, a learning experience each mm -hmm. time. Uh, and then <clears throat> another question is, um, you just ask about uh, you. You mention an objective evaluation of the general fund's fiscal condition, and an evaluation near the top of page three. I'm sorry, yeah, on the near the top of page three, and I'm curious how you would see that <coughs> coming coming forth. It's kind of like we we do now. We we every year we have to evaluate. Um, 
you know, focusing on the general fund as we're developing, we're kind of preparing for the budget process using October, November. We start evaluating what the numbers look like. We assess our revenues, the trends, and what the outlook is, and we look at our expenditures, um, things that are, you know, mostly on a status quo basis like salaries and benefits. We see whether there's an opportunity to reduce costs or what, how they're variable. But we do that already, but obviously when we um, have a major impact, we, we do our best to take the information we have to try to make an, uh, a determination of what's the long-term implications or impact, how long is this recession going to last, for example, what do we expect revenue losses to continue to be. Um, it, objective is really a maybe not the, the fair term because there's a lot of subjectivity to that because predicting the future is always is always going to involve some subjectivity and it's an art and, and some part science. But as much as we can to try to identify the, the scope of the impact and define what it is um, and then come from there be able to come up with a strategy knowing what that impact is and what it looks like, what's the nature of it, to come up with a strategy to address it. Um, so it's just assessing all the financial information we have and determining what the, to define the scope of the problem. Well, it's, it's not intended to be a bringing in an audit. I mean, we have the, the, the books are audited each year right. by an outside sure. entity, but that's not what you're talking no, about. No, it's you're going to be within staff, the city staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Certainly. Ms. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm. So the general fund reserves right now are underfunded by, is it $6 million? Roughly 6 to $7 million in that ballpark. Um, and when do you think we can make that up? Well, that's part of this discussion. You know, one of the things you'll see in, in our recommendations is to um, dedicate some of any surpluses or portion of the surpluses we may generate in the future toward helping to restore reserves, um, plus also just keep up with the fact that reserve requirements go up as our budgets grow. Um, so it just depends really assuming that we move forward with this particular policy and the strategy that it would be based on how well we do in terms of revenue growth beyond what we expect to be able to generate surpluses that we can then put into uh, restoring reserves in the future. So I, I guess it's going to be a while. And would your recommendations be different if we were fully funded? Uh, sure, it would be. They would be different because we might say instead of, of dedicating a portion of that toward restoring reserves, we would dedicate all of that, for example, toward putting into a capital replacement fund uh -huh. for infrastructure financing. So sure. On page three, under assessing the fiscal condition and outlook of the general fund, the second paragraph refers to paid consultants. I've had a little feedback from a paid consultant we're going to use for wastewater rates later on in the, the day. Um, who would be the paid consultants in looking at these right. economic issues? Yeah, um, We currently have a contract with a company called Muni Services. They um, audit our sales tax revenues um, and they do some work also on the business license side of things and, and utility users taxes. So. And they provide us periodically, like quarterly, their estimates of what sales taxes might be in the future. And so they have staff, and it's a big company of staff, economists and the like, who make projections, of, you know, tell us worst case scenario, best case scenario, what's the, or what's the likely scenario of what uh, sales tax may do in the future. So that's what I'm talking about. It's not incurring any additional costs to hire paid consultants. It's just based on consultants we have already retained and utilizing their information as part of the mix of information we might use. Where are they located? Uh, they're in Sacramento, I believe. Where all things happen. Yes. Um, a final question. Um, I see one of the recommendations is a supermajority approval of five votes of the city council to use these contingency reserves. Can you, um, Mr. Samario or Mr. Armstrong, uh, describe for us why you're recommending that, please? We've talked a little about it. I think it needs some sunshine today. I think the reason we put it in is the discussions at least we've heard from the council in the past as we've talked about this is that um, the desire to kind of set a bar, the bar higher when we take from reserves and that there be a lot more thought goes into it and we felt this was one way to do it and, I, and, I, and we put it in to a certain extent to at least encourage the discussion knowing that this is kind of a policy issue for council, mm -hmm. but you know I just felt we'd put it in, 
and because the council has said we need to be more careful about when we use reserves and we felt that would that would do this and I, it, it does have you know as I as I mentioned at your last meeting you know it, there's nothing that says a majority of the council couldn't change this policy if they really wanted to get it reserves the other thing it could put you in the middle of is is let's just say for example that a majority of the council approved a new labor contract that required that we take from reserves, then you'd have a supermajority that might be required then to approve those use of the reserves. So it could create some potential for conflict there that I think we all need to be aware of. But again, a majority could then could change that policy. But I think we put it in because of the stated desire we heard from the council when we had that broad discussion of let's, let's set a higher bar for when we take out of the reserves because there was at least what, what I perceived was a feeling we'd, we'd, we'd taken too much out of reserves during the good times. Well, I agree with you. It, I, I'm leaning toward not um, agreeing with that recommendation. No offense to you. Um, but I think we, I look forward to a bigger discussion at the council level. Mr. Armstrong, you and I had a brief discussion uh, via email about the uh, concept we talked about at the last meeting about the, in the event of needing to use the contingency fund because of an economic downturn, uh, that we wanted to structure that in a way as far as possible that we were only using the contingency money for the unexpected event, which typically would be the first year of a recession, um, and that after that year we would plan in such a way as to minimize our use of that contingency reserve. Um, and I know that you feel that my language on that was a little too strong, but <laughs> I, would, I would still like to see something something to that effect in there, and I was wondering what you thought about that. Yes, uh, Chair Francisco and members of the committee, I think one of the things when I started thinking about it is is that, you know, recessions don't always time themselves to go to start on July the 1st or right before fiscal year. In many cases, you know, for example, in 2008, we got hit in September of 2008. We saw our revenues decline, you know, pretty precipitously that during that time. We were struggling and, you know, cutting expenses and really kind of got a grasp on it over the next year, year and a half. But, of course, one, we didn't know how deep the recession was going to go. Uh, the other thing is, is in, in that case, you know, and, and, and I, what I expect in the future is we had long-term labor contracts that in some cases that affected our ability to cut expenditures without cutting positions. And, and while I like the idea of let's just use the reserves in one year, and then create a, a way to cut expenses or raise some other revenues the following year so we only use it one year. You may, I could, I could easily see us where we were in a situation of we would say, okay, we expect attrition of a certain rate over the next two to three years and we're going to have positions that are going to, we're going to, typically we have 5% attrition. But rather than lay people off, let's use attrition to reduce the size of the workforce over a couple of years and use revenues to soften that blow while making other cuts and that it just seemed to me that to say we're only going to use it for one year was a little strong. But I, as I mentioned in the email, I said I think what you do want to have is something like here is you got to have a plan that says if you're going to use it for more than one year or even for one year, you have to say specifically how are you going to balance so mm -hmm. you're not just, let's just say you use $3 million, you know, you don't want to do that two or three years in a row because it's going to blow through the reserves quickly. But let's right. say you went $3 million and then you went a million and a half and then zero or something. But on the flip side, you have to say, and the re way we're going to make that up is through attrition, we expect to cut, you know, this many positions year one, this many year two, and we also will make other ad adjustments. But just, and, and it, it's consistent with this balancing strategy, but I, and I was trying to be a little more specific. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I'd comment when you were out, when Councilmember White was asking these questions about the financial condition and the balancing strategy. Previously, we had no, basically, we would have as a, you know, in the fiscal impact, ask council to appropriate from reserves, and it would be a one line, and we really didn't do anything. So this is a huge change in terms of saying, no, there's got to be a, here's where we are, and here's how we're going to put the money back and balance it. So that this is much stronger language than we've had before. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just in, in to your uh, area of concern, I mean, the, we're seeing the PERS costs going out there uh, a couple of years, as, uh, going up for a couple of years, and I could see that as coming in and, and hitting 
uh, we we know they're coming next year, shall we say, and that that may be a, a, a there may be a, a need to use reserves again on a short term basis to uh, to to cover that cost because it's a cost that's going up and we don't have any control over it at that point. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'd make another point. I, 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 the way I kind of looked at reserves and as we we're opening this conversation is a little bit like interest rates where in bad times and you try and have interest rate interest rates tend to go down well this is the time to use reserves is when you when you have those uh, uh, those downturns so I'm I'm a little more willing to, to, to extend out the use of reserves for for uh, a little longer <coughs> period of time but again with the super uh, with the super majority I didn't hear how what mm -hmm. your thoughts were about the super majority as well I'd appreciate hearing your your thoughts on that, but uh, it, it's I'm I'm willing to certainly willing to consider it. I want to hear what the full discussion is, but uh, you're I, willing to consider which the the supermajority oh. concept uh -huh. uh, you know makes makes some sense, and uh, and I am looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say on that. But uh, I'd appreciate hearing what your comments sure. are on that as well. Absolutely. Well, I, I think just to f finish the topic we were discussing, I think that. Um, uh, I certainly understand your point, Mr. Armstrong. I guess I'd like a little bit of language in there that says the main purpose of the contingency reserve is for unexpected events. And it's certainly true that a recession could deepen even more than you had thought once you were into it. And I understand the things that might make it necessary to use the reserves over a period greater than a single year. But still, if there was something in there that just said this is really to deal with the unexpected, not to shore up something that you know is coming anyway. Um, as far as the supermajority vote for the use of the contingency reserves is concerned, I think that's I think it's a, a great idea. I think that um, again, one of the reasons that we're considering these new reserve policies is because um, we have to be cognizant of the fact that city council turns over with term limits on a pretty regular basis. We can't depend upon um, people who are elected to this position necessarily having any finance background let alone a background in municipal finance. And so I think everything that we build into our policy that, uh, if nothing else, leads council members to ask questions about what's going on. Why, why do we have this policy? Um, I, think that's, I think that's an excellent idea. And I think part of the trap that uh, council fell into a few years back was we'd had so many good years in a row of good revenue and increasing revenues that I think people started to take the contingency reserve for granted. So I, th I think that the, the idea of having five votes for the use of contingency reserves is um, it's an excellent policy, and it will enforce uh, some needed fiscal discipline. And one more comment. Sure, that of area. course. The, um, and I won't be able to remember the numbers. Is it, is it 89, 156, 157? Is that what, what are the 150, resolutions 156 and 157? 95. 95, yeah. 156 and 157. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of what you're speaking about there, where they're, they're uh, messages. I mean, they're obviously the, the, messages they're the ones from the that, past. that, yeah, and that they uh, they set a tone. I mean, I know that that was one of the things that I learned about when I uh, started running for council was just how how important those were, and and what what an excellent piece of the foundation of the city's finances uh, those resolutions. Uh, uh, what important role they play. So this could be a good complement to those. And basically, as a package, they start to, as you say, guide um, future councils to, to, to manage the funds in a certain way, in a better way. I would agree. Mr. Samario. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to point your attention to page two, where we define the contingency reserve, the third mm -hmm. paragraph. Um, it does indicate here that the reserve is restricted to addressing the impacts of unplanned and unexpected events. So I think that speaks to what you were referring mm -hmm. to. It's not, I think it's pretty clear because it is restricting it for those purposes, not something that is planned. In fact, um, kind of to respond to a comment from Mr. White, the last paragraph on that page, that things that it would not necessarily be intended for would be things, such things as negotiated salary and benefit increases and um, projected increases to health insurance premiums or retirement costs. So in your example, if we know two years out that retirement costs 
are going to be going up because of what happened a year ago or whatever reason, I would consider that to be um, expected, and known, and it would not necessarily f fall within what I think the, the guidelines of this policy because we plan for those things, we know they're coming, and we have to make adjustments to accommodate, to adjust for those cost increases in other ways. And I don't know that that would be an appropriate use of reserves, at least the way this is written. Of course, Ms. Maria. Thank you. Mr. Samario, can you talk a little bit about health insurance premiums? So we get a preview well in advance when things are changing in that um, funding? Sure. Um, Ms. Maria, every year, every January, typically this one past year was an exception, but typically every year in, in January we see increases to our health insurance premiums. Um, as you may know, the, the city and employees sort of share in that. Um, but um, we typically have a, a bigger burden of the health insurance costs, so that when rates go up 10 percent, we have that's on the city to pay for those. Um, we make estimates every year as we're putting together the budget of what's going to happen um, in the following year, you know, at the January, and we usually will assume usually a 10 percent rate increase. So we can we already plan for that. It's not something that we're not aware of. We're not necessarily always right in what we assume, but we're typically pretty close. Um, but it's been going up pretty, you know, pretty substantially the last several years, and you know, anywhere from five to ten percent. So we do plan for that and and budget for that. Question. So it doesn't make sense to use reserve monies to fund salary increases, I think. So what? How would we find money for that? <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. I, there are a lot of options, I would presume, but. Yeah, I don't know that you know, according to this policy, we would suggest that the use of reserves to fund negotiated salary and benefit increases would not be consistent with this policy. And so it means finding other re if revenues are going up, for example, if sales tax, bed taxes are increasing beyond what we can, what we have assumed, then there's opportunity there for some ongoing money to fund ongoing costs because salary and benefits costs are ongoing, whereas reserves are one time. Um, so that's kind of the, the nature of it. So yeah, we would not be recommending reserves, and it would, we'd have to find other ongoing sources or reducing costs in other areas in order to fund those ongoing costs. But but I will tell you, I think that that this section in here relating to salary increases and also especially retirement costs is probably going to be the greatest challenge. It's been the greatest challenge in the past, in the oh, 2002 to 2004 period. PERS rates went up just like this. Um, I think one year went up six or seven percent of salary in one year. Huge increases, multi-million dollar increases that you know that happened relatively quickly. We also had we had budgeted for pay increases, and then the council granted pay increases much larger than what we had in the budget, and and so that th this will be a tough one to meet year in and year out just in the way we do business. Um, and what it means is probably from a staff standpoint is we're going to have to probably budget a little bit more for those things rather than just say, oh, well, if council approves something greater, we'll just take it out of reserves. Um, you know, historically, the city did not budget at all for salary increases. But, um, we used to just wait till they were approved, and then we would take it out of reserves and deal with it the following year. So we've actually tried to budget something for reserves the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, excuse me for salary increases because we didn't want to just, you know, you know, we were accused by the employees of just hiding money, and we said no, we we're going to put in there what we reasonably expect we can afford. But I, that will be a, a challenge. I think on the health benefits side, I think in terms of the city's overall budget, even if we miss our projection, it's not a huge amount, and we probably can absorb it in in one year. The following year, we might have to deal with it, but it's the salaries and the purse cost I think that will be our greatest challenge. Mm -hmm. So I think what I was trying to ask before was, are we putting money back into the reserves now? This is the proposal we're looking at today, but what are we doing now? So this policy doesn't, doesn't indicate how much money we're going to be putting back into reserves. The only thing it does provide for is that in the future, if we do have any surpluses, that a portion of those would be used to, to um, Restore reserves to where the, up to the point where we are fully funded. And I, and I might add, we don't budget to replenish reserves. 
what we do is we try and be conservative enough on our budget assumptions that that we won't spend every dime that's been budgeted and that revenues will come in above projections and that money will drop to the bottom line. So in a hundred million dollar budget, if you're if you if you do better in projections by a couple percent, that's two million dollars that drops to the bottom line, and that's basically how we have been replenishing reserves the last three years. Really, we've we've had a little extra. It, typically, it's one one and a half percent, but that's how the money drops to the bottom line. Um, and the, the question is how conservative you get in your budgeting practices when you're cutting services. We've tended to be. You know, we try to be very exact and not put a lot, you know, be too conservative because you're cutting services. But that's really kind of the overall way we expect we will replenish reserves is, for example, this year, bed tax and sales tax have been, have been well above our projections. That will drop to the bottom line and end up going to replenish reserves. Likewise, we'll probably underexpend in the general fund, not by a lot, probably seven, eight hundred thousand dollars and that will also drop to the bottom line. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion to recommend this splendid report to the full council. Well, Mr. Chair, I would be delighted to move that we, the committee recommend uh, this package to council uh, for consideration and, and uh, possible approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Anything else, Mr. Samaria? That's it. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>